What's up guys, Laura here with STP. The August test is right around the corner. So whether you're cramming last minute or you've been prepping diligently all summer, you've come to the right place. This video is going to be my top 10 last minute tips and stick around for all 10 because I've got some killer tips for you to really help you hit your goal on this August test. And speaking of goals, comment below and let me know what you're trying to achieve on this August SAT. Is it a 1300, a 1400, a 1500, or more than a 1500? I would love to hear where you're at and where you're trying to get to. All right, guys, so buckle up and think of this video like the Rocky montage of your SAT journey minus the running up the stairs part. Quick shout out to our sponsor, Preply, the OG digital SAT prep app that's available in the App Store and in Google Play. Guys, if you've been slacking on your SAT prep, now is the perfect time to go download Preply. I'll link it up here for you. It's super easy. You can access over a thousand exclusive questions right from the palm of your hand on your phone. So go ahead, get that today and get that last minute prep in before your test. All right, let's get into these tips. Tip number one, you may need to read the bullet points on the note-taking questions. Yes, yes, you have heard me correctly. Gone are the days where you could just read the question and answer it and completely ignore the bullet points in the notes. How do I know this? Well, July 2024, let's rewind a month ago. College Board changed a bunch of questions in Blue Book Tests 1 through 3. So I actually made a document that highlights all the changes College Board made to those original tests, and I'm linking it below for you guys, so go check that out. But one major change that was made came on Test 2, Module 2, Number 27. They implemented a brand new note-taking question that's harder than the others where you actually have to read the bullet points to get it right. Why would they implement such a question, might you ask? Well, probably because they're intending this school year to test note-taking questions that way as well. So I would anticipate at least one question like that on your test. What I did was I actually screenshotted that particular note-taking question and put it right in the document for you guys. I would practice that question before your test for sure. All right, tip number two, we are anticipating a harder graph question on module two. This is for the same reason as mentioned in the last tip. College Board also implemented a tougher graph question in um, test one, module two. So this graph question requires you to have to read the entire paragraph under the graph to get enough context to be able to answer the question. So keep that in mind. You might not be able to cut corners and just skip down to the last sentence or two on your test. All right, guys, before I get to the last tip, I must say, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I'm extremely disappointed in you. I don't know what you are waiting for. If you're planning to take another SAT after the August, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell now because I come out with useful tips every week to help you master this test and hit your goal. All right, tip number three, I would say make sure you are aware of all the math concepts the digital SAT is going to test you on. Do you know the distance formula? Do you know the circle equation? Do you know how to get the midpoint, et cetera, et cetera. If you need to brush up on your math concepts, a great resource for that is actually the Preply app. Preply is a subscription app, but there's also a free version and the flashcards are free. So I would go into Preply and look at all the math flashcards before your test. Quiz yourself and make sure you know all those concepts before you go in. And listen, guys, if you want to do more in the Preply app, get a subscription. Practice some questions. You can just get a weekly subscription and then cancel it right after your test. All right, tip number four, you can warm up in the parking lot at the test site. And when I say warm up, I mean warm up your brain because athletes warm up their bodies before they have a big game. Why would it be no different with your mind? So what I did was I created a document for all of you. I've been feeling very generous lately, if you hadn't 
if you couldn't tell. And I'm linking it down in the description below. This document is 10 pretty simple, basic English questions that are designed to get your brain woken up and you thinking about how you're gonna tackle the questions on the test. So I would recommend you print out this document, go out in your car, get to the test site and in the parking lot, do those 10 questions before you go into the test. It'll be a great warm up for you. Now, just as a disclaimer, I did not include the answers on purpose. I don't want you checking answers to see if you're right or not. This is an exercise to warm up your brain. And remember, when you're in the real test, you can't check to see if you're right or not. All right, tip number five, start at number 15 on the English modules. If you struggle with time on English module two, especially, this is a great strategy for you. It's designed very simply with the easier questions in mind to bang them out first and then get to the hard, more time consuming ones last. You know, I want to just collect as many points as I possibly can as quickly as I can, right? So if you start at 15, you're going to hit up the grammar, the transitions, the note taking, and then loop back to the words in context. Those are all the quickest, easiest questions to do, guys. And then you can save those harder reading questions that are more cognitively challenging for last, which also it's nice to do it that way because it'll warm your brain up with the quicker, easier questions so that you'll be ready for those more time consuming, challenging questions later. All right, tip number six, and this is very important. I've seen and heard of too many students messing this up. You want to make sure that you pick up the pace on both module twos of English and math. Guys, listen, module one is going to be pretty straightforward. You can go at a very leisurely pace and get through it with time to spare, probably. But the problem is you, you get accustomed to that pace so that when you get to module two, it's very easy to continue at that same leisurely pace. But as I'm sure many of you know from taking a digital SAT already, the difficulty level goes from zero to 100. So I want you to reset after you're done with module one and remind yourself, okay, I'm going to be an entirely different student on this next module. I'm going to pick up the pace. I'm going to go mu much faster with purpose than I did on module one. That will ensure you don't run out of time and it will help you get through the question. Tip number seven, don't leave anything blank. Guys, just give yourself a chance of picking up the point. So if you're stuck and you're not sure, put down your best guess. If it's a math question and there's a range of numbers, pick a middle number that gives you the highest probability of getting it right. If it's one of those, um, student response questions where you actually have to type an answer in, put three. I've seen three come up as the right answer more than any other answer ever on those fill in response questions. I would also say to make sure that you spend no more than a minute to a minute and a half on most of the questions because you want to give yourself a chance to get to the other questions down the line. And if you spend five minutes on one question, you might rob yourself of an opportunity to pick up more points on questions you do vibe with. So make sure that you're flagging questions, guessing and moving on if you need to. I always say to my students, surrender to win. Tip number eight, please don't forget to use Desmos. What I want you to do is repeat after me right now. Desmos is my friend. Okay, tomorrow morning or whenever you take your test, I want you to get in front of the mirror when you're brushing your teeth and I want you to say that three times over. Guys, Desmos is amazing. If you don't know how to use it, check out YouTube resources, search for Desmos, like tips and tricks, they're all over the place. I have some on my channel too. Make sure you use Desmos on test day. Tip number nine, skip the geometry questions and save them for last. I think that this is pretty obvious, but geometry questions are much more time consuming than the other types of math questions. Often you have to draw a picture, or replicate a picture on your scrap paper. You might need to figure out how to draw in extra lines and make different shapes out of the picture. There's a lot of thinking outside of the box that goes on and you might try something and get stuck and then have to pivot. So you wanna save those geometry questions for last. Make sure you're prioritizing easier questions first. All right, last and final tip, tip number 10, and this was given to me by one of my students. You know who you are out there. 
And basically we were working together the other day and what this person said to me was they approach the reading passages like their stories. And their reasoning behind this was it helps them see it is more of an interesting passage where they can learn something from it versus a cumbersome SAT passage that's uninteresting and that, you know, they're just trying to plow through. And I thought that that was a really cool idea. You know, if you approach the reading passage like it's a story and genuinely get some interest in it and learn something from it, you're in the right frame of mind to be able to process more of it and get to the right answer. All right, guys, to recap my top 10 August last minute tips, we have tip number one, you may have to read the bullet points on a note taking question. Tip number two, you will likely have a tough graph question where you have to read the entire paragraph under the graph. Tip number three, make sure you brush up on all the math concepts and formulas you need to know for the SAT. A great resource for this is the Preply app flashcards. Tip number four, do a warm up in the parking lot at the test site. Tip number five, start at number 15 on the English modules. Tip number six, make sure you pick up your pace seen on the second modules of both English and math. Tip number seven, don't leave anything blank. Tip number eight, don't forget to use Desmos. Tip number nine, skip geometry questions and save them for last. And last but not least, tip number 10, view each reading passage as if it's a story. All right, big thanks to the Preply app for making this video possible. I will link it up here again so you can get those extra reps in this week. If you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you so much. Let me know by putting the top secret code words in, in the comments below. Put angel hair pasta for me. Then I'll know you made it to the end and stuck it out with me. And it'll be pretty funny because we're gonna confuse a lot of people that decided not to make it all the way to the end. All right guys, until next time, happy prepping. Good luck on your tests on Saturday. Peace out.